In this week's episode, she wants full-figured women to feel great about themselves. But first, it was meant to be a simple defense mechanism. Now it brings him global recognition. He took up martial arts as a way to defend himself against bullies. Soli Said loved it so much that he traveled to the US and Japan to train with the best in the game. When he came back home, he attracted prominent figures like Winnie Madigizela Mandela and Tim Mudise to his gyms. Today, Soli uses martial arts to help professionals achieve excellence in their careers. I grew up in, the, in a rough neighborhood in Johannesburg, in central Johannesburg, right in the inner city uh, called Chinatown Malaykin. And you needed to know how to fight. If you didn't know how to fight, you always got a black eye or a you know, bleeding lip or something, you know? In the 1960s, when martial arts classes first came to Chinatown, Soli Saeed decided to start attending. I loved that karate class so much, I never missed a single class after that. After matric, he went to a teaching college before making his way to the United States to learn martial arts. It gave me a chance to really train with, with the world's best guys. Train with the top guys. Giants that you had to fight against, you know, I mean, African-American guys, all six foot six, six foot four, you know, big guys. And those that were small were just amazing, you know, they were just, their karate was just remarkable. In the early 1970s, he moved on to Japan, where he really wanted to be. He met the Grand Master and began to understand the discipline that came with karate. You cannot be one minute late entering that dojo floor, you'll be killed. You'll be beaten to bits. If your suit is dirty, blood stains, which you just finished fighting somebody earlier on in the day in another class, and you didn't change your suit or wash your suit and come in there with blood stains, you're gonna be given a good hiding again. Soli spent the next few years traveling between the US, South Africa and Japan, learning martial arts from the best in the game. At the same time, his home country was in turmoil. Apartheid was crumbling, but Soli wanted to return to share his expertise with his fellow citizens. Against the will of the government, he opened the only non-racial martial arts school in Fortsburg. It wasn't surprising it would attract prominent political celebrities and musicians. I had all this amazing uh, important equipment. You know, I was teaching scientific fitness training. This art taught people confidence raised their self-esteem, gave people their worth, you know, made people feel they're worthy people. The venue became special and brought clashing political factions together. I got people from all walks of life. I even had people from the then National Party, white guys that came to my gym, you know, uh, to train. But the government became increasingly wary. Inevitably, Soli was picked up by the police to give information about freedom fighters who were attending. Going to John Foster Square was always a scary thing. I mean, you didn't know whether you'd ever come out of their life, you know? So anyway, I went there and they interrogated me for like four or five hours, hot, 
lights on my face, ask me questions. I said, I don't know these guys. Despite continued harassment, Soli kept on going and established himself in the fitness space. Over the years, his organization grew and branched out to several parts of South Africa, offering wellness, fitness and rehabilitation programs. I opened up two in Soweto, opened up in Azadville, Kruk Arulipur, opened up in Ferenigheng, Lanasia, you know, um, central town at the Methodist Church. We've got some lovely program running at the Methodist Church in town, you know. Um, we've opened up all over now. I've got branches in Durban, Cape Town. Many South Africans are up in arms about the increasing rates of crimes with murder rates going up and uh, younger... South African radio giant Tim Mudise is among Soli's students. One incident that I recall was in 1994, just before the debate of Dutlek and Nelson Mandela. I was one of the uh, panelists there to, to do the interview. And uh, as much as I was honored, I was definitely extremely nervous about the prospect of uh, facing over 800 million viewers around the world. So I did not know what to do or how to calm myself down. So I spoke with Soli. So I gave him a mantra, I said, breathe in, as you breathe in, say, I am. As you breathe out, say, relax. Breathe in, I am. Relaxed. And as long as it takes you to say the word relaxed, as long as it takes you to breathe out, say the word relaxed. And let it just go and dissolve into thin air. Soli is the pioneer of martial arts in South Africa and travels the world. He's also roped in his family to help him improve lives. This is not a second home, this is my home. So when I am here, it's with people, it's engaging with people, it's, and being able to also teach, teach children, teach women, teach men as well. <laughs> They're a bit scared of me, but it's okay. <laughs> I've worked with people that had, you know, no legs, people that have had, um, that were semi-blind, you know, that had visual, uh, you know, challenges. And today they're successful business people, you know, they're doing well. You know, when they see them, when I see them, it's amazing. In 2006, Soli was inducted into the World multi Martial Arts Hall of Fame in the U.S. He was also honored with a professorship in sports medicine. Still to come, Oma Tema wants full-figured women to look good. <laughs>